All right, so here's the problem. If you've been watching the world news lately, you probably know that there's a virus going around. The good thing though, is that restrictions have slowly been going away. So a lot of the old people who've been stuck in their homes for months can finally go out and play golf, including my dad. The problem is that the website where you book these tea times have kind of been spammed, like teenagers trying to get their RTX 3090s on the release date. Basically, it's impossible to book these tea times normally. Also, the website opens at 6 a.m. I'm not waking up that early. So my solution is to write a bot that basically opens the website up, refreshes the page over and over and over until the website loads, books the tea time, and pays all in less than one minute. That shouldn't be too hard, right? If you watched the last video that I made, the one that I coded so it changes with the date, you might have noticed that I used a module called Pi Auto GUI. But Hinton, what's a module? Basically, say you're coding something that's way too complicated and you don't want to spend years making your own solution. Just search the problem into Google, find the module, run pip install into your console, and move it. Well, what Pi Auto GUI does it basically acts like a simulated keyboard and mouse. So if you tell it to press a series of buttons and click in a specific position, it does it for you perfectly. But we're not using that this time, we're using Selenium, which is another module. So what's the difference between Pi Auto GUI and Selenium? Here's a good example. My friend challenged me to a typing card last week, and he's pretty good. I mean, like, really, really good. Obviously, I can't type nearly as fast, so I wrote a bot to do it. Like a normal person. Now, if I had used Pilot GUI, the bot would have no idea what to type, since I can't really see what's on screen, just what to do. But with Selenium, my bot can actually see what's on the webpage, pull up the next 25 words, and type them all at once. Amazing! For Henshin, why didn't you use Selenium last time? It sounds like it's way better. Well, dear viewer, because Google disabled it. Are you kidding me? Well, it blocks it because it thinks we're a bot. Which, I mean, it's kind of true. Anyways, this shouldn't take too long to write, so I'll be back in like a couple minutes. So it's been around two weeks since the last update I made, mostly because... <laughs> Anyways, a tiny bit of code I wrote here works so far, and if you run this, you can see that the website loads with the right times and settings. But I also uncovered another problem, Cloudflare. So Cloudflare blocks you if it thinks there's something suspicious about your computer, if it thinks you're using a robot, or if you're just spamming a website. For us, that's all free. Right now my code doesn't know how to cope with this, but there might be a solution. So the simplest way is just to make the code wait 5 seconds when it sees this free ID text. But that's 5 seconds that other real people are using to book tea times. Unacceptable. Instead, I'll partition the tabs into different sections, where each section is tested individually for the website, while the other tabs go through the Cloudflare cycle. Then, when that section gets blocked, we simply switch to the next section. This way, our code will always have a section to be checking, and we won't be wasting any time. So let's just run some tests. So I've been running this code every night for the last two weeks, and every time something manages to go wrong. Either the page times up or the code can't set the right passwords, but I think I got it to work now. Sadly, we can't get a live reaction since it runs at 6am, but instead I coded it so it starts recording the stream automatically. So hopefully this works. Well, it worked. I was honestly pretty surprised, but at least my dad can play golf this weekend. Anyways, this video is a part of the Team Seas project, created by Mr. Beast and Mark Rover. So right now, about 18 billion pounds of plastic trash are being added to the ocean every year, which is just a mind-blowingly large amount. To combat this, YouTubers from all around the world have pitched in to help this project, with each dollar donated to TeamSeas.org, equivalent to one pound of trash that gets taken out of the ocean. My friend Nick has a great video on how he's helping the Team Seas project, and my friend Ethan's doing a 24 hour live stream at twitch.tv slash eastlandwatercup. I'll link all the videos in the descriptions. So remember to donate here to tmcs.org and subscribe if you like the video.